Hello, my name is Russell Myers. Welcome to Issues Unite. So, for the second time since the Biden administration took office in January, the United States has bombed Iraq and Syria. Uh, the rationale being given is that uh, the Iranian-backed uh, forces in these areas uh, had attacked uh, U.S. forces in Iraq. Well, I have pointed out before that the U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria are there illegally. And they, in Syria, it has always been illegal. And in 2019, the Iraqi parliament voted unanimously for U.S. forces to leave their country, and yet we are still there. So U.S. forces would not be in any danger of being attacked if they were not illegally occupying these countries, whereby the Iranian-backed militias were in those areas fighting against ISIS and al-Nusra, the terrorist organizations in those regions. Therefore, the United States just gave air cover to the terrorists once again. Iranian-backed does not mean that any Iranians were even present in that area. That doesn't mean that one single Iranian was present. What it means is that they that Iran had provided weapons or logistics in some method to the forces that are fighting. The, the Iranian-backed forces are literally fighting in favor of the governments of those countries. Meanwhile, the United States is trying to overthrow the government in Syria and to take over Iraq. So, this country, but what is the response? The response is, is what is most important in this country. The American response has just been, well, it's just another day. Just another day, uh, or well, damn those uh, Iran, those people shouldn't have been there, or Iran shouldn't be helping them. There is no response when America sells or gives weapons or billions of dollars to the Saudi government uh, to uh, conduct genocide in Yemen or the Israeli government conducting genocide in Palestine. But fight against them and you're a terrorist. Uh, how does this work out? Uh, how does the American mentality even balance this? Well, part of this is because Americans are indoctrinated to, desensitized to violence from childhood in school our children are taught that war is heroic and glorious and that the US is never wrong our children are taught in school to hide defend against school shooters well what you're really teaching those children is that the person with the gun is far more powerful than they are. So for a person that is seeking power, then they're going to want to be the one holding the gun. And that's what we're te that's what these children are being taught. Another school shooting in America is just viewed as another day in the US. You go through you drive through basically any town in America and you're going to find dojos, boxing schools, um, MMA schools, all of these that teach violence, 
they, they teach fighting and yet drive through the same town, try to find some resource that teaches diplomacy. It isn't until you are an adult that you run into classes such as nonviolent crisis intervention, which I have taken as a nurse, and these, t and these classes are generally geared toward people in nonviolent occupations like the medical field. I was in my 30s before I wound up taking one of these classes. I was never taught any such thing in the military or any time prior to that. And it is not required training. I had even been a security guard and I had never been through any such class. Nonviolent crisis intervention? No. It's, you know, use overwhelming force or threat of force. In business, uh, things are viewed as a competition to the death. Um, there is a school, a university in Alabama that has a football team that call themselves what the War Eagles and call themselves the War Nation. You know, this is not a reflection of a mentality of friendly competition. This is destroy your competition show no mercy whatsoever. We turn on the news, we see violence, we turn on television, and how often on television, uh, TV shows, movies, uh, how often do you see a TV show or movie that does not involve guns, bombs, missiles, um, you know, some form of threat that must be eliminated by overwhelming force, violent force. Americans have become desensitized to the use of violence as a culture. The NRA and gun manufacturers convince you that the only way you can be safe, the only way our society can be safe is by more guns, more guns. If you are, such as I am, an advocate for some form of gun control, I am in favor of gun ownership, but responsible gun ownership with limitations, such as eliminating assault weapons. And yet, if you express these views, at some point, you will be met with the threat of violence against your person. Even with things that don't involve violence. Look at the lack of respect. Look at the threats, insults, use of emotional force, abuse that you are met with on social media that becomes overwhelming to many people. And this is the absolute worst. But our government, with our actions, incentivizes this. It's normalized. There, there is no reason we are, we are not even in the mentality as a society to engage in diplomacy. Keep expanding the war budget, and it is a war budget. There is no defense department. It is the war department. It never should have changed that name from the war department. We're not defending against anything. We don't belong in these countries where we claim that self-defense. If Iran is helping other countries to fight against terrorists and we attack Iran or Iranian-backed forces, 
we have indeed endorsed, supported, empowered the terrorists. Why? We're not fighting against them. If we are, if our forces are entrenched in specific areas and the terrorists are mobile, moving across other areas, we're not helping the governments of those countries fight against them. We are helping the terrorists, and the terrorists just avoid the areas where our forces are. In fact, it has been proven, absolutely proven, that the U.S. has armed and funded al-Nusra, al-Qaeda, ISIS. We helped them form. We, we gave them training. We gave them money. We gave them weapons. Over 70% of the weapons that belong uh, to terrorist organizations, when uh, their caches have been discovered, have been American weapons. They're not Iranian. The remainder of them come from, what, Bulgaria or Germany, a small percentage from Russia, Kalashnikov rifles and so forth, AK-47s, you know, but those are in the small percentage, percentile. It is not until this country can turn around and stop being a war nation that we will stop being a war nation until we start teaching peace, nonviolent crisis intervention, diplomacy, problem solving that does not involve the use of violence. Nothing about this is going to change. We use force against our own allies. We sanction our allies, which is a form of violence in itself. That is economic violence. We impose sanctions on many countries which limit their access to food and medicine. This is violence. I don't care how much our government claims that, this, uh, that sanctions are nonviolent. They are very violent. They result in illness and death. The bombings in Iraq and Syria hit at least one civilian population resulting in injuries and deaths with one child fatality being reported. But that's so far. You know after the fact that some of the people that were injured will die after the fact. They just don't get reported as much. The, then it's considered complications of trauma. No, that, they're a bombing victim. They are a victim of U.S. military violence. This is violence. And we cannot turn our heads away. We cannot resolve this as being justified in any manner. We have to stand up against this. We are bombing seven countries. We are militarily occupying other countries. We have over 800 foreign military bases. This is force. This is intimidation. You know, there, there, is no, there is no excuse for this. We cannot loud our young people for joining the military when our young people, in happily declining numbers, are joining the military to attack brown-skinned people in other countries. That is just being de desensitized or even promoting popularizing, you know, we, 
violent behavior, force. This is not the country that we have been raised to believe in. This is not the country that I want to live in. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to go moving to another country, even if some, uh, some people will tell me, well, go move somewhere else. Well, I'm standing my ground. I am here, and I hope you are with me, to try and change this. I want this to become the country that we were always told that we are. But the only way we're going to do that is when we demand it, when we stop being desensitized, when we stop viewing it as just another day in America, when we stop saying, well, at least it wasn't Trump. No, the, the military, uh, you know, adventurism in Iraq began long before Trump. In Syria, it began under Obama. We went from bombing two countries under Bush to seven countries under Obama. That did not increase or it decrease under uh, Trump. For better or worse, whatever his flaws were, which were many that Trump did, he actually made some lame attempt at withdrawing U.S. forces from different Middle Eastern countries. But he met with resistance, and he caved. He caved, and he gave up. Hey, this is not, this is not a leader in any way. Biden never gave any promise to decrease the forces in these countries or to end any of our wars. He is expanding our wars. We cannot just accept this. So, the change has to come from us. It has to come from inside each one of us and banding together to fight against this. If, if you think it's just too emotionally difficult, think how difficult it is for the victims of all of this violence. These are people living in their own countries. If they're fighting, they are fighting for their countries, fighting against terrorists. If you don't see this as an absolute horrific disgusting tragedy, then you have to look in the mirror and ask yourself why. And if your answer is fear, then you need to get over it. If your answer is, at least it's not Trump, you need to get over it. If your answer is, well, at least it doesn't involve me, then bite me. Share this video. Talk about these subjects. If we really want to be part of a world community, if we want to be part of a community, we cannot continue with all of this violence because it will only get worse. It is getting worse. But we're not fixing the reasons, the, the root causes of all this violence because we're not focusing on it. It's always reactionary. Oh, there's more violence. Why is there more violence? I don't care. Buy more guns. Hire more police. Build more prisons. No. Because we've been doing this for decades and look where it has led us to. And if you think it's ju just doing more of the same is going to change anything, I've got a bridge I want to sell you. All right. Share this video. Talk about these subjects. If you can, please donate a dollar a month. 
to help expand the channel, and I will catch you in the next one.